Nate Swink, welcome to The Real Build. How you doing today, brother? Good, good, brother. Thanks. Excited to be here, man. Yeah, I'm excited to have you on. You and I have been talking about this for a while. It, it's uh, you and I have known each other for a little bit now, become good friends. And, uh, you know, we know each other through Top Contractor School, a uh, few groups, actually, Warriors for Christ, Arte Syndicate. So uh, glad to finally have you on and talk about your business, talk some welding, talk some steel. And uh, we got a lot to talk about. But before we get into it, let's hear about your background a little bit. So who is Nate Swink? Yeah, let's rip it. So I'm 26, started my entrepreneurial journey at the age of 16, dropped out of high school at 16. Um, I have a 10th grade education. That's it when it comes to, you know, formal education. And one thing that I love that, that drives me through some of that stuff is, I believe it was Mark Twain, you know, he says, don't let school get in the way of your education. Right. So essentially, I did not let school get in the way of my education. Dropped out at 10th grade, um, got a DBA at 16. So had to have somebody drive me down to the city hall to register the DBA because I couldn't, I didn't have a driver's license yet. So um, yeah, now I'm just got married in November, I think about a week before or after you did. And um, yeah, man, just trying to. Trying to do what I can. I mean, let's let's dive deeper in your background, though. And I obviously know about you and with Swink Welding and so on, too. And and yeah, obviously, we we both got married. Uh, yeah, it was a week after you, too. So congrats to you. And uh, it's it was we were back to back on that, too. And but you you have kind of done it. You're you've you you are a true story of you know, dropping out, figuring things out, doing it yourself. Obviously, you're still in the process of doing it yourself. Business isn't easy. Uh, we all know that. And you are ground up building this business. Um, you know, I want to talk about Swinks Welding, but let's talk about first, let's go backwards. Let's dig deeper into your past too a little bit. And why construction? How did you get in the construction field? And then why did you choose welding and steel? Why did you get into that avenue too? Obviously, you got into business young and so on too, but why? Why construction? Yeah, for sure. All right. So um, I grew up in construction. So my dad is, I think, let's see, this year has got to be 35 or 40 years in business as a custom pool, hardscape, softscape, um, landscape contractor. And I grew up from the age of, I don't know, 10 or 11 working with his guys in the summers. You know, I worked with a demo crew hauling wheelbarrows of demoed out driveway. You know, my wheelbarrows were not very big. And sometimes <laughs> I would, you know, you'd have to run that wheelbarrow up the ramp, you know, to get it into the bin. And man, I, I don't just remember every day. I'm like, don't tip the damn wheelbarrow, you know, going up the ramp. And, and I tipped it a couple of times, <laughs> got yelled at, you know, they're like, I chingao, you have to fucking wheelbarrow. What the hell? You know, like all yelling at you and shit. <laughs> so, you know, did anything from that to framing and, you know, by at a young age, I knew a decent amount of construction, residential construction anyway. Um, and then one summer, I think I was about 15, spent the summer working in Arizona with my uncle. He does uh, heavy equipment has a large storage facility down there and kind of services different pieces of equipment and, um, you know, was doing some welding. He was doing some welding, showed me how to weld more or less was, you know, it was stick welding, right. Or shield of metal arc welding for anybody who's watching this, who like knows the nitty gritty, but you know, most people just know it's stick welding, right. That's like the typical one. You put the rod in there and shh. so he spends like five minutes showing me. And then gives me a bucket of rod and a hood and says, all right, I'm out of here. And I'm like, you know, <laughs> uh, all right, fuck it. I'll figure it out. Right. <laughs> so, you know, fell in love with it. Just hours, just burning rod and learning. Um, <clears throat> came home from that trip. And my, you know, I asked my parents, hey, I, I like welding. I want to do more of it. Can I take over the shed on the side of the house and make it a little shop, you know? So then I go to Harbor Freight and I get a little chintzy machine 
take over the side of the house. You know, I stole a couple shopping carts and like chopped them and lowered them and like did whatever, you know, probably just messing around from the age of say 13 to about 14 and a half, 15. And then I was a boy scout at the time. And I met this guy through the boy scouts who, um, you know, the welding merit badge had just came out that year. So, and they're like, yeah, we're going to go to this seminar to this guy's house, Jack Compton. He actually created the welding merit badge. And I'm like, oh, cool. I just got into welding. I'm a boy scout. I got to go and meet this guy. Right. So I go, I meet him and I'm talking his freaking ear off, you know? And essentially at the end of it, I say, Hey Jack, I'd really like to learn more from you. You know, can, can you teach me one-on-one? And this guy's background He was in the union iron workers for like 35, 40 years. He did that. He only worked union in the summers. And then during the school year, he taught at College of the Canyons. He's written many books on welding. Um, So he's like the guy, you know what I mean? And I just so happen to, people might say like, you know, luck or fall into that. You know, you and I both know that that's God, right? Like Mm -hmm. setting, setting a path for you. So anyway, not to ramble on with this story, I I got with Jack, started mentoring with him, and you know at that point started working more. Told my dad, hey, I want to drop out of school. He's like, well, let's let's take you out of regular school. We'll put you in a homeschool program. You'll you'll do it about two times a week. And then I got my license, my driver's license, and so I'm driving. Uh, Jack's house was about 45 minutes from my house. So almost every day, every other day, I'm I'm at Jack's house. You know, his wife's coming out, Connie, you know, bringing us sandwiches and crap, you know, like <laughs> just just learning, welding my ass off, learning from this old geezer. And um, yeah, got certified at the age of 18, LA City certified, which is a, you know, pretty much the world's most prestigious certification for welding structural steel. Um, they, this is interesting, but even in other countries like China and Japan, they will send their welders out here to get certified Mm. just because of how prestigious that certification is. It's comprised of a practical welding test and a written welding test. Whereas most are just a practical, like you just do the welding and you pass. Um, so, so yeah, that's kind of in a nutshell. And then just started doing little jobs, right? I started the welding business doing any little mobile welding out of a freaking Nissan Maxima, you know, (laughs) and have the big welding tank sticking out the window because I couldn't close the damn door with with a big tank in the back. So I had to lean it out the window. And man, I remember rolling up to the, the company where you fill the tanks and they're like, what the hell are you doing, kid? This is this is so unsafe. You can't have a, a flammable tank hanging out your window. What the hell? I'm like, Hey man, I'm making this shit work. You know, I'm trying to be somebody, you know? So anyway, upgraded to an S 10, that thing blew up. My dad graciously gave me a, a loan and helped me get a diesel truck. And then, you know, just moved on from there. Got a contractor's license at the age of 21. A year after got a second contractor's license um, I mean, there are stories behind that where I literally called the contractor state license board in California every week for a, pretty much a year because they kept sending me letters. Hey, there's no way you have four years journeyman experience. You know, and I'm like, hey, I've been doing construction my whole life. And I had letters of recommendation written up. And finally, I sent them a letter saying, hey, if you don't give me a test date, then I'm going to go after you guys. You know, I'm going to lawyer up and, hey, I'm a kid. I'm trying to get after this shit. So um, anyway, I think they just got sick of me calling them, (laughs) calling them, emailing, sending handwritten letters. Finally, I got a test date, went and took that, killed the test in like 20 minutes and uh, walked out of there. Boom, went to work, went right back to work, you know. So. Yeah, that was a lot of talking. 
<laughs> no, man, you're good. I, I want to hear you. You can go on for I, I don't care. There's no limit to this whole thing, too, man, because I, I relate to you a lot, too. And the wheelbarrow story cracks me up because I did the same exact thing, man. I remember as a little kid pushing that damn thing and uh, spilling it here and there too myself. And, uh, you know, and then also the little uh, random task my dad used to make me do, like moving the concrete blocks from one side of the job site to the other for no reason but uh just to keep me <laughs> just to keep me busy along with sweeping jobs and digging ditches so i relate to you on that aspect too but going i mean it's amazing where you're at today and you got to give yourself a lot of credit to dropping out of high school and like you said reflecting like how god works and how things came into you know, into your life and so on and finding that mentor like you did also and kind of has paved the way to where you're at today and in the construction industry, in the welding industry and and how, you know, well you're doing and so on too. And and that's not easy, man. Like dropping out, being that young, starting your own business, uh, you know, driving around when you said you're driving around and uh uh, I think you said a Nissan with the flammable tank out the back of it too. Yeah. You know, I, I remember I was driving around a Chevy Malibu with tools on the back too. So I can relate to you there too, as well. After I got done riding a bike around the neighborhood, after I wrecked a truck that I had to, but <laughs> that's a whole nother story. Right. But, <laughs> but I commend you, man. It's, it's, it's amazing. You're doing amazing things too. And and I want to get into your business now a little bit more swinks welding and and what you guys are doing what you guys are offering as a welding company what exactly are you doing uh you, obviously you've started out in business with small projects now you're doing larger projects too so let's talk about swinks welding a little bit yeah so that's a <clears throat> loaded conversation <laughs> yeah, let it, you know? let it rip man so we started doing um, high-end residential projects in Beverly Hills and different things. And we're still doing those. That's actually what we're pursuing more of. Mm -hmm. um, we slowly got into the commercial game and then kind of just dove head first, lost, um, you know, a few hundred thousand dollars lost out of my pocket, you know, almost literally over the last year, almost went out of freaking business. So yeah, talking about just getting kicked in the balls every single day, every single week. But, you know, so we'll dive into that lesson, right? So um, doing commercial jobs anywhere from 100000 to 200000 had an opportunity to do a large apartment building. It was about a $1.2 million subcontract. And it had, I don't know, 400,000 pounds of steel. So just to give you a little insight on what that would look like you know structural steel beams columns um four flights of stairs um uh, four different flights of stairs four levels each you know guardrails balcony rails property fencing everything um and that's to where we stand out whether it is residential or commercial we want to be the guy who's going to come in we'll do your structural steel We'll do your really high end interior rails that, you know, architects that you work with or whatever, pick all that shit apart. And then we'll do your property line fence. We'll do your gates. We'll use a sub to do your motors on your gates. You know, we want you to be able to come to us with a problem and we give you a turnkey solution. And, and it's not at all because I want to be, you know, a one stop shop. I hate that term, but that's kind of how it ends up working out, you know. Um, I'm, I'm definitely not the guy who's all things to all people. Um, but you know, that's, that's our model, right? We don't want to be picky. We want to say, Hey, Bill, RK Ryman, what problems do you have with steel and how can we solve them so that we're your go-to, you got a problem, you call us, right? Um, a lot of guys, they'll do the structural, but they won't do the fencing. And they certainly, if they do structural, they rarely do the interior railing. So we're, we're breaking into that, all that kind of stuff. Um, anyway, so we took that big commercial project and then took another big one that was like 850 and probably should have bid like at least 25 or 30% more on each one of them <laughs> and just totally lost our ass. We did learn a ton, right? It takes a lot to manage a project that large. 
as you know. So we learned a ton, uh, lost a lot of money, took out a lot of loans to keep floating, and and now we're now we're here. We're, this is where we're at. We're just I'm cold calling again. I'm like trying to rebuild and and get going in a different direction, doing more residential, back to back to our basics, right? Um, I got kind of captivated by a big shiny object of, mm-hmm. hey, you got this big million dollar contract and i'm looking at it and i'm like oh you know 22 percent net i'm like well that's fucking that's pretty good mars that's, that's my ferrari right there you know <laughs> it's like because when i took that contract i was only 23 years old mm-hmm. so imagine being 23 and then you get uh, 23 24 and you get that opportunity you know it's just just lessons you got to learn right as you get older is don't let the shiny objects you know <laughs> well i want i want to go into that a little bit more too because obviously business it's you get kicked in the nuts where we all have our ups yeah. and downs and so on too and it, let's talk about like that a little bit because obviously that was a shift with your business and and you know and it was a change to you and now you're going a different course in the residential industry which we'll get into residential too and talk about that a little bit more but um you know what lessons did you learn from that moment uh that have like shifted you now made you better now too obviously you're making up for that loss too and i have no doubt you're going to and you guys are going to continue to have success in business yeah, there's no ass. doubt about it uh <laughs> but you know it's just what lessons have you learned, you know, from that moment? Cause that, that was a huge moment for you. And you know, I've talked about it in the past. Yeah. So lessons that I've learned is, is as entrepreneurs, we, we, we look at something, a big opportunity, whatever. And we're like, you know what, I'll figure it out. I'll work more hours. Right. And we're all totally, you know, if you're an entrepreneur and you're watching this right now, you're like, yeah, shit, I'm doing that right now, right? You know, I'll dig myself out of this hole or I'll take this opportunity and I'll just work my ass off. And it's, yeah, that works sometimes, but more times than not, it's just too much freaking work. You know what I mean? You're going to drop the ball. And that's that's really what happens. So don't take on more than you can handle. You know, also make sure before you just dive into these large projects, or or any large, you know, let's say if you're not in construction, just make sure that you can handle it. Make sure you have a team, a process, all of that stuff. Um, because we didn't, right? I just dove in and said, fuck it, I'm young. I can work, I'll handle it. And, you know, you do as much as you can until you start getting um, back charges and like delay letters. And then you're like, Oh shit, I guess I'm not handling it. You know, $2,500 a day delay. Mm. Um, Ooh, these commercial guys, they'll fuck you up. They're not like the residential guys. You know what I mean? <laughs> so learned all those lessons. So to recap, so that people can just get a quick hit out of it. Um, make sure you have a plan. Don't think that just because you're a hard worker, you'll be able to work yourself out of, you know, some of these situations. Sometimes it's like, yeah, I can work real hard, but I also need a team to manage it, right? So that was one lesson. And the other one, and this could be for really any business, is make sure you're going after a certain type of job, right? We set revenue goals in our businesses. Let's say your revenue is goes 10 million don't just think all i need is 10 million dollar jobs and i'm good to go because maybe that's not the type of job or size of job that you're supposed to do you know what i mean and that's how i thought about it it's like hey i wanted to do back then i think i wanted to do like 2.5 million this year and i'm like shit if i get this one job that's that's almost half of it right there in one hit i'm already halfway there that's like yeah, but now you got to get the thing done. Good luck, you know. So look for, have a clear picture of what your ideal customer is. Have a clear picture of what type of project you need to take that your team can handle. What's your team the best at? You know, what kind of problem is your team the best at solving? Focus on those. You want to venture out and get into a bunch of other crap. Do that once you're making money with 
this, right? And that's what I didn't do. I'm just kind of like, let's go here, let's go here. And then it's like, oh, great, we're out of money. And how, how are we going to make payroll this week? Uh, oops. Hey, need a, need a flash cap. <laughs> you know, hey, Jonathan Fedora, can you get me that by like <laughs> tomorrow? Need a flash cap for 60K, you know? And then next thing you know, you're in a big hole. Mm. because you weren't paying attention so that's to be transparent you know people are on here to learn that's where we're at mm -hmm. so business is no joke you can get upside down real quickly and you can get you can get effed up man so but the bright side of this as as another little like lessons learned is and i was talking to a contractor today right he calls me He's only been in business six months. He's like, man, this is so tough. I'm not making any money. I'm just, I got to make some money, man. I'm not making any money. Da, da, da. I'm like, bro. Oh, 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 sorry. And then he's saying, uh, you know, man, I, I think I just going to get my inspector's license and, and do that. Or I, I'm not sure. And I'm like, you know what? Slow down, dude. You just got to keep at it. The game isn't who's the best per se. It's really who can just stand there and get kicked in the balls the hardest and the longest, you know, um, outlasted temporary, you know? So that's, that's where we're at. We're just taking the hits and it's like, all right, here's where we need to go. In the meantime, I'm going to just get the shit beat out of me, but we're going to get there. because I'm not going to quit. You know, I don't, I don't do anything where it's, well, if, if we're not there in 12 months, then I'm just going to have to switch plans. You know, if you people watching this are going to just do that, you're going to fail, man, because you can't just, well, 12 months here. Nope. 12 months here. Nope. 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 It takes time to build a freaking business. It takes time to build momentum. And needless to say, if you, if you make a mistake, that mistake cost me at least two to three freaking now, probably two years of momentum that mistake cost me $300,000. That means now I have to make $300,000 of profit to get even because the only way you get out of, you know, unforeseen debt is through making profit. You know, you can't just pay it off your overhead. So yeah, it's, um, outlast is temporary. You'll make it, but you cannot just set arbitrary, you know, in one year, if this doesn't work, no, burn the ships. You know what I mean? Burn the ships. Hey, hell or high water. I am making this work. I don't give a damn if I die while I'm doing it. This is what we're doing. You on board? Let's go. You know, you're not. Move. Get the fuck out of the way because I'm going, right? I don't know. I hope it takes me X amount of time, maybe less, maybe more. But either way, I'm not going to quit, you know? So I would say that's the biggest lesson. You know, 26 years old now, and I think the business is pretty upside down because of certain things, you know, that loss and other things that we had to adjust, right? We're probably upside down like 450,000, right? It'd be easy for me to just say, let's just fold that one up and mm -hmm. let's start fresh. But that's not the right thing to do. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to fix this mistake. It might take me a while to fix that. And then I'm going to move in the right direction. And at the end, I'm going to know that I did everything with integrity and that I paid everybody. Might have taken me longer to pay them, you know, but I paid everybody. I didn't just say, hey, let's take this S Corp. Let's just bankruptcy that sucker. Let's start a new one tomorrow. And then I'll take all that loss and wipe it away. Not that it's quite that easy for people watching this because it's not that easy, but it's, you know, easier than what I'm going through. But I'm not going to do that because I don't quit. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, it, I love it. Everything you said there, too. Obviously, I have no doubt. I mean, you're 26 years old, too. It's like and people that are listening to this, too, that are going through a similar situation, too, like to have your mindset and mindset is everything, but to have your mindset, keep going, not quit, know you're going to get out of it. And you're still at such a young age, too. There's no doubt your company is going to be something huge. I mean, it already is. And you're already working your way up uh, it, there, too. And how how far you've already come. You know, we all make mistakes, too. And I can talk about it, too, as far as in the residential building world, too. I've made bad calls. I've made 
bad picks with customers too. I've worked with difficult customers that have made our lives hell that, you know, we've, we, we should, I wish we would have passed up at that time, but you know, it was a lesson learned to where now it helped me read certain clients too that, that aren't a good fit for us too. That'll be, you know, not every client's a good fit for everybody. And on the residential building side too, it's like as builders, we do see, okay, wow, this is going to be a big house. We're going to make all kinds of money, this and that. But is it always worth the aggravation? I've said it too. I've had past customer that I said, if they came and knocked on my door and said, here's $10 million to build me a uh, shed, I'd tell them no, you know, yeah. just because how difficult they are. But that's the lessons you learn in life of what, and what you know, going through those lessons, like you said. Yeah. And, and one thing for people to remember on here is it will take you, you know, a, a lose job will take you longer than like a win. You know what I mean? Let's say the win costs you or you make a hundred thousand. Well, if you lose, it's going to cost you more than that. There's not a equal parallel between taking the right customer and winning and the wrong one. And, oh, it's equally you know, I win 100K or I lose 100K. No, losing is incrementally worse because you're wasting all this time as well. That's not, that's, you know, a big thing we don't think about is I wasted all this time working for this cheap asshole when I could have invested that time procuring a better client. And you're not going to walk away because that's not what we do because we operate with integrity. But now you got to cater this asshole instead of being able to go procure the right ones. So just take your time, guys. Don't be in a rush to just sign a deal. You know, maybe get lunch with a guy, maybe talk to him, call other people, you know, do your homework because one mistake could cost you a lot of time and money. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not worth it. And then too, and I think like, like we just talked about too, a lot of people see that shiny object. They see, you know, they get into business like, and that's why I like talk, I'm talking about this with you and is because a lot of people get into business and it's not just Skittles and rainbows. It's not just, uh, you know, you're automatically going to make all this cash and, you know, money's going to keep pouring in and so on too. And it, it's, it's hard, man. It really is. There's a lot of difficulty. You got to have the balls. Like you said, you know, <laughs> you really do. It's just, you gotta, you get in. It's not, it's just, it, there's a lot of getting kicked. There's a lot of getting knocked down. There's a lot of just, it, it's figuring out how to get past that. Having, you know, just having the mental toughness, the mindset to kind of get through it and figure it out too, because Another thing a lot of people struggle with too is they look too far in the future. They look too far ahead of what the outcome is actually going to be too. And I talk about this a lot. Is, Made that uh, mistake. You know, yeah. that's, that's part of the mistake, right? Don't think about what what could go right. Think about what could go wrong. Yeah, there you go. That's spot on. I mean, it's it's it, a lot of people don't think that though. They just, they don't think about it. They, or they overextend the outcome too. And they think, you know, whether it's going to be a negative outcome or a positive outcome, they just don't think they don't plan. Like you said, in your situation too, the planning and everything was, is the right move to make. Obviously you made the mistake. Now, you know, for the future, that was your lesson learned. So now let's talk about, you know, I want to get into kind of what, what you're doing now on the residential side and that flip of things and why you switched there are you going to go back to commercial again eventually? Are we going to, are you going to stick with residential? Um, you know, and, and the differences there with the residential world versus commercial, because there are differences too, but I want to hear from your perspective. Yeah, definitely. Um, so we're still, you know, so when your business is in a hole, if you would, like mine is, you need to get out of it by producing revenue very quickly. And commercial projects are going to take you longer to get contracts, longer to get paid, longer to finish, retention, all this stuff. And I don't have the luxury of that time. You know, I'm like, you got to sell, 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 because that um, 
that lion or that bear, like Brian says, is, is chasing you down and it's going to eat you <laughs> if you don't go and run your ass off. So right now we're focusing on residential, um, just trying to build relationships. You know, I'm calling people. I'm. It's funny, this one guy, I'm actually like commenting on his stuff on my Instagram for Swank's Welding. And then I'll go comment on his stuff with my personal so that he can link the two, you know, and I'll like build some credibility of like, oh, it's not just some steel company. It's, oh, here's Nate. Here's all his videos. You know, I've been doing one reel a day providing value for the last like seven months since the uh, summer TCS retreat. You know, that was like my big takeaway. So that's the thing, right? If you're in a hole, figure out what kind of jobs are most profitable that you can turn quickly. And maybe that's, you know, ten ten thousand dollar jobs a month instead of one hundred thousand dollar job. Um, so that's where we're at. I also like residential because I really like building relationships, and it seems like residential is more about um, the relationships and things. And I have good relationships with the companies that I've worked with on the commercial side, but it's. Um, it's just different, you know. It's a lot different than than residential. Um, residential, I feel too. A lot of the construction teams involved. It's more of a team thing, you know. Like the framer working with the steel guy, working with the plumber, working with whoever. It's more of a team. And then when you go on commercial, it's more kind of like get the hell out of my way, um, delay letter because you're in my way, and. You know, oh, you put this shit in my way, so I'm going to back charge you. It's just kind of like, yeah, I don't think we need to do things like this, guys, you know. Um, some of that, too, right, falls on you as a subcontractor or contractor because that just means on those jobs you got to be more organized and on the ball and have more management, more back office to to run the extra paperwork, to to manage it more tightly so that you can get the schedule and the hit the um the deadline dates. So I really like residential. That's how I started. So I'm kind of getting back to basics on that. Um you know a lot of the old clients that I first started with I realized like aren't good ones to build on, you know. So I'm just procuring new ones. Like I said, you know, we do quite a bit of jobs in Malibu. So trying to get more into that area and just working on building relationships, that's one thing that, you know, it's kind of tough to do because you you might think it's awkward, you know, like if I didn't know Bill and I wanted to do all of Bill's concrete piles and, you know, pour in place walls and foundation work, because, you know, who knows, he, he probably subs out a few million of that a year, right? You know, I'm like, hey, it's a nice golden goose. I want to get that. How do you build that relationship? And it's awkward at first, right? You don't know Bill and you're calling Bill. Hey, man, hope you have a great day. I'm here if you need anything. I want to solve some of your problems. How can I help? And the whole time you feel like you're getting blown off, you know, and you're sending selfie videos. Hey, Bill, how you doing? This is Nate. Started at the age of 16, brother. I just can't wait to bring you some value. Give me a call. You don't hear back. You don't hear back. You don't hear back. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to just beat that bush till the fruit falls. Well, so. I agree. I want to, in residential though, I do agree with you because residential is not so much turn and burn like commercial is too. You know, commercial is get you in, get you out, you know, trying. And, and it's just more like with residential and what you're doing too, it's more focused on the overall product and quality too, because you're doing it for a homeowner, you know, and it's something that that homeowner is going to live in and so on too. commercial. I mean, obviously I'm not saying all commercial is crap and it's not quality jobs and stuff like that, but there's just more, like you said, more connection and residential, even on my side too. It's just, connecting with the homeowner versus commercial you're you're you as the builder just trying to get that thing done as fast as possible and move on to the next project because it's all yeah. about the, the check and the money and so on too where uh residential it's more one-on-one -on -one, a lot more communication and so on too and and relationships like you talked about it's important to develop those relationships with the client too 
over time. So let's talk about that too, a little bit more. Like, obviously you're, you're calling, you're cold calling, you're doing the emails, you're doing the content, your content's been awesome. Uh, you know, you've been so consistent with it too. I'm sure there's a lot of people seeing your stuff too, that you, that's the thing with content. There's people watching that you don't even know that are watching. Uh, and you're doing all these things too, to build those relationships, build that foundation to, to continue having success. You know, you went through that bump in the road, but this goes back to what you were talking about too. You did not quit. Now you're trying to find other avenues to where you can, you know, continue to prosper as a business owner. So I, I got a lot of respect for you. I commend you for everything you're doing too. Let's talk about the importance of developing relationships too. Um, you know, one thing, which I actually pulled this going into my next segue, this is actually, I think, from your website, is we believe communication and innovation are what drives a successful and profitable construction relationship. So let's talk about that a little bit. How are you doing that? What's what's that mean? Where are you with that? Yeah, so I think let's start with innovation. Innovation in construction and in your business cannot come from you right? It's, it's a cultural thing that your organization breathes, right? They live on innovation, you know? And when I say not come from you, you're the leader. So you got to kind of start all of these things up and breathe it to life and kind of encourage it. So it does start with you, but it can't only be you being innovative. If you own a business and you're watching this and you're the only innovative guy in your business, well, the odds are when your employees bring you good ideas, number one, you probably shoot them down. Number two, you probably don't encourage them to, you know, make new ideas. So innovation starts with encouraging people to get creative, right? And that's what I do, right? I encourage all my guys if they have different methods. I really try to just say, hey, how do you want to do this? And let them own it and figure it out as much as I can, you know? Um, and then communication, that's a hard one. That one, and I'm like so hard on myself, dude. I beat the crap out of myself with and judge myself so tight on everything I do. So communication, I feel I'm horrible at. Um, uh, not horrible. I I feel like I, we got rough edges as a company, you know. Um, with scheduling and communicating some of that stuff, it's a little tough. And that's probably a lack and a breakdown in our procedures. So we need to we need to build that up, but, you know, needless to say, you know, grading myself on communication and what that all is, is, Hey, if you reach out to us today, we're going to get back to you within 12 hours. Right. Or if there's a problem and you call us, we're going to pick up the phone. We're not going to say, Oh shit, it's bill. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, my guy called me on from the field an hour ago and said, he just effed up this whole thing at his job. Uh, let me just call him back later. No, it's, Hey Bill, let's go. I know what happened. How do we make it work? How do we make it work? Relationships. Now, how do I make it work? Now, how do you, cause it's not your problem. I effed it up, you know? So communication, you know, communicating. Here's where we're at follow-ups right with sales and with operations follow-ups are huge um i follow up with sales to the point not like every day where it's annoying but where it's like it's pretty prompt you know and that's also how you can build a relationship is in your follow-ups so yes yeah. you know i i in build i mean Going back to the communication aspect of things too, and how important it is as well as in follow-ups, because that's part of your communication process too. But, you know, one thing I credit you with too, is not stopping too. You, you brought up earlier, uh, as far as on your, your sales and reaching out to these contractors, constantly sending them email videos and, and still doing that one. And, you know, it sucks not getting answers from people. It sucks not, you know, people, but you're doing it differently too. I mean, if you did that to me and sent me a video, a personalized video, I'd probably respond. So, I mean. Wait, but... hang on. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Contractors in the Marco Island area. <laughs> yeah. Don't know, don't actually send me a personalized video. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. 
but it depends, you know, there's, there's, there's pushy salespeople. And then there's people that offer value too. And you're offering a lot of value with what you do too, because you know, the I'm trying ask, to, I'm trying to, yeah, but you are. And, and it's, there's different types of salespeople. There's the ones that are, you know, they're very consistent, but annoying. There's the ones that are, uh, you know, send you an email blast that are just full of words and you don't have time to read them. I get those quite a bit. Uh, those yeah. go right to the spam tank. And then there's the ones that are consistent also, or there's ones that aren't consistent, which those just disappear eventually. But then there's the ones that are consistent, but also add value each and every time they send you something too, uh, which is what you're doing as well. But going to more into depth in the communication, it's, it's so important with any job that you do to constantly communicate. And I'm personally trying to figure out what avenues I can go to up my communication game as well. You know, we just hired a, a lady today uh, that's going to head our warranty. And that's been a mission of mine too, because I get abundance of calls. I'm always wanting to call people back no matter what. Uh, eventually, you know, if I'm in the middle of something, I'll figure out a time to call them back. I get a lot of warranty stuff. I get a lot of after warranty stuff too, of people just asking for my opinion. So I wanted to put that piece in place. Uh, so now we have a go-to kind of concierge type service that we can provide too. So it's very important for those people that are listening with communication and what Nate's talking about too. Uh, within your business. I preach on it all the time too. So uh, commend you on that brother of what you're doing and commend you on the sales approach too. don't bombard me with the uh, emails now of videos and so on too, because Nate told you to but I wanted to go <laughs> into the next thing with you too, because I've taken stuff from your website. I like to do this with every guest on here because your website obviously is, is a piece of who you are. So you said our mission guides us to our goal of becoming the leading structural steel contractor in the nation. What is that? What is that mission? What is that goal? I want to hear more about this because I have no doubt you will be there, especially how young you are and the things that you're doing and how you keep getting up. So let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so mission, that's something that I've actually been kind of struggling with, right? Because I'm not clear on that too much anymore. So hopefully that didn't just <laughs> F up your whole thing. <laughs> All right, let's but, just cancel that question. You know? <laughs> and uh, No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, edit. No, it's, that could be a lesson, right? Like your mission might change once you figure out different pieces of the puzzle as you're going right so i still do want to build a company where it is you know multi-state or national but it's it's kind of changing a little bit you know how do i do that and and stuff you know how do you make all that happen without investing a huge influx and all these different issues that come with it so one model that i'd like to hire somebody in the next three months to help me build that I just don't think anybody in the country does it. So I, maybe I shouldn't say it. No, I could. <laughs> Is service on a national level, you know, welding, repair, and maintenance for transportation companies like XBO Logistics, um, FedEx, whoever, right? Who's doing their welding repairs at their facilities if they don't have in house facility maintenance? Um, property managers, HOA managers. So that's a whole avenue that are consistent, easy jobs that I can subcontract out and then actually grow to a national level without having a huge, you know, influx of overhead. Um, and it's a model that nobody has. I spent days researching online who has this model, right? If you're a property manager, and you have properties across the state, across the country, whatever, you're always going to have steel ADA railing because that's required at a commercial, whether it's um, you know a commercial building or a apartment building, right? Oftentimes your stairs are steel, loading docks, dock rails, all this stuff, right? Do you want to have to call 50 different contractors up and down California or the Western United States to solve this problem when you can call one and they solve the problem. 
right? Even if it costs you 10 or 15% more, now, if you add up all that time in one year or multiple years of trying to track it down, you're saving way more than that 10 or 15%. Um, so that's that's some vision that I have. But in the meantime, I got to still run from the damn bear while I'm building that out. So, <laughs> so that's, that's some stuff you'll see in the future kind of working. Um, I need to pick Brian's brain from the pavement group and some of those guys because they're in that space where they do paving nationwide for these people and i'm kind of picking their brain hey who's doing these repairs at these facilities and a lot of the feedback i'm getting is nobody it's a big freaking problem when something happens it's they're down for months in this one area of the operation because of that and i'm like Mm. well that's good signs you know i just dig in more and kind of figure it out so pretty excited about that and um yeah, man. I'm going to do some more re- uh, residential stuff on the local level, more commercial stuff on the local level, but really to scale doing in-house commercial and residential structural steel and miscellaneous to such a huge geographical area is just to be transparent. I, I'd love to look at these guys, P&Ls who, who do it all in-house and have a huge geographical area because they're, they're, their profit margin is probably pretty low. It's just too much to manage, right? So we are working on using more subs for certain things in our business to streamline and, right, overall providing a better cost product and speed for our client. You know, it's not just about the net profit. It's not just about making money, right? I need to make that clear. So... Yeah, going, I mean, it's crazy how, isn't it crazy how over time you learn, you know, your mission changes too. And that's, that's like a lesson to everybody too. And obviously what you, you started with commercial, big commercial projects, now you're going to residential and now you see this new avenue that you can possibly explore that can take your company even bigger and, and higher than it's ever been before too. And it's just, things are constantly shifting in business too. And one thing I wanted to get into a little bit before we wrap it up with some personal questions, because of time here, um, but the last thing here is, you know, just quality control and how you're going to maintain that. Obviously, now you're in you're in residential, you were in commercial, you might go back to commercial, depending on how things go with residential, or if somebody called you for a commercial job, you've obviously had that experience now and know what to do through life experience and business. So how are you delivering that better experience to your clients or better quality control and just over delivering? What are some of the things that you are doing? Yeah. So again, (laughs) my Jack of your question. (laughs) No, you're good, man. We're we're in the middle of working on that. Honestly, man, we're really in the middle of trying to find in, find in the hell is that fine tune. (laughs) Fine (laughs) Fine in. Yeah. Too much of this Jocko fuel. Get y'all jacked up. (laughs) Um, we're really trying to fine tune that process. So, you know, we, we do have issues biweekly with quality and not major issues, but just little here and there. So we're like, all right, how do we get this, you know, fine tuned? So that's just currently what we're working on. And I would say, how do you get it fine tuned, right? Clearly defined processes, people. Right. And then making sure that people, you instill leadership into them to take ownership of problems, take ownership of outcomes. Right. Um, And all of that stuff. So, again, goes back to like you're an entrepreneur. Right. We want to conquer the world, but you can't just think I'll just work more hours and I'll just solve all the problems that works until your wife hates you and you don't have work-life balance and you're overweight because you're eating out and just like trying to be, you know, I've been there. I've done, done, done all those different mistakes. So, yeah. Life lessons, man. Yeah, for sure. And like I said, I got no doubt where you're going. The projection where you're going is nothing but up too. So, especially after this conversation, you know, life, life, 
life gives you lessons, man. It hits you hard. That's how God works too. And things happen for a reason. That's for sure. But I, before we wrap this up, I uh, just want to get into some personal questions. This is one of my favorite. This is my favorite question. Different answer every time. What about you personally? What lessons have you learned throughout your journey that we should all apply to our own business or our own lives that can help us grow? Yeah. So, and I'm still learning. It's, that's the thing. Like I'm just lately, I've honestly been just beating myself up. You know, I'm yeah. like, what am I doing with my life? You know, I'm 26. What am I doing with my life? I'm a loser. You're only 26. <laughs> right? But I think it's that mentality as hard, as rough as it is, is what really makes people great. Right. Mm -hmm. Because we could work you and I and other people on this call, right? We could work our ass off 70 hours a week sit down to watch an hour of TV and literally 10 minutes into watching the show think, man, I'm fucking lazy. But that's just who we are, man. That's what makes us great. Mm. So, you know, what have I learned personally? How am I developing personally? Um, I'm kind of working on being content at times, you know, hey, I need to rest. I need to take time and exercise. Um, one thing I struggle with is being present, you know, and making sure that when I get home, I'm present with my wife and things like that. That's a struggle. Um, and also balancing your, your fitness, your health with your business and relationships, um, you know, and also through this tough time in business and kind of pulling out of this, there's been a lot of a lot of weeks where it's like, man, how are we going to make payroll? Hey, how are we going to do this? You know, oh, we, we didn't make the insurance payment. That's canceling. You know, can they wait a couple of days and we can pay it on Friday? Or I mean, that's some real, this is business. This is no joke. And the last two months, my faith in God and Jesus has just been, just been growing because there's times where you can try to do it all yourself. But nothing beats just saying, you know what, God, I've done everything I can. I need you to, I need a miracle here. <laughs> and he always pulls through, you know. So leaning more right on that, lean not on your own understanding. You know, that's just, it's, it's really where I'm at with a lot of things. Oh, amen, man. I, and especially I, I, with God and everything too, I mean, put it in his hands a hundred percent. It's just, it, it'll things, big things will happen. But like you just said too, being present, you know, that was one thing too, that was huge right there. As you said, you're being more present. And I think I'm trying to be, yeah, I, I want to make it clear. Uh, yeah. Cause if my wife watches this, she's going <laughs> to be like, you lying? What do you mean you you being more present? You know, at least like, you're trying. trying. And, if she's, and if she's watching this, effort. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You were trying because we all struggle with that, especially in entrepreneurship too. But in construction, there's a lot going on. We're getting hit left and right. Or you know, my phone's buzzing now as I'm sitting here, and it's six o'clock. You know, it's just it's there's constant stuff happening and i try i do it with my wife i try and sit and when we're, we're at dinner or whatever we try and just turn off the construction not talk about it not talk about work because we work together yeah and just try i and commend you man how do you even make that work it, it, it we do i mean it, it's you need to get her on the podcast <laughs> oh she's gonna be on an episode for sure yeah and uh we've talked about it too here in the future but you know her and i um you know, we, we will, we'll slip into it and then we'll be like, yeah, we don't want to talk about it. You know, let's, let's try and switch the subject because you get so burnt out with it. You know that yep. too. It's just, but it is always on your mind. You're always thinking she was talking about the, the other day. She wasn't sleeping good. She would wake up thinking she forgot something at work too, you know? And I'm like, maybe you need to meditate more and just shut off your brain a little bit more here and there too, or something. So yeah. it's just, well, that's how, you know, you married a winner. Yeah. Yeah. There you right? go. Because yeah. yeah. No, I agree. My wife does that too, man. You married yeah. a winner. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And it's just, it's hard at times, but I liked what you said. There's is trying to be more present as contractors too. 
Uh, so that was a great answer. I always get one on that question. Uh, let's talk about your, your, we always talk about your past. Let's talk about the future. Where will we see Nate Swink 10, 15 years from now? Who will you be? Ooh, 10, 15 years, man. That's a ways out. You know, <laughs> <laughs> my, um, my goal, I'm 26 right now. I want to have a seven figure income by the age of 30. Um, not to say that first, you know, because money's not the most important thing. So I probably should have started with my wife and family first. I'm going to get in <laughs> trouble for that. But, uh, you know, me and the wife, newlyweds, working on having some kids. So I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward to having a son and that whole um, that whole journey in itself, right? Like I'm looking forward to how much I'm going to learn about myself while raising kids. So that's one avenue. Um, seven fi- or sorry, eight figure entrepreneur Swanks Welding will be at eight figures within the next three to four years. And yeah, man, I'm just kind of, you know, there's a realization a lot of people need to have. I'm only 26. And when you're young and even people who are old, right, we oftentimes live above our means and it's easy to live above your means and kind of act like you're rich if you would. And I'm not going to lie, I've done that, right? A lot of people do that. And over the last few months, I've had the realization of, you know what, you can do that and never actually be rich or wealthy, you know? And I'm done playing the game, you know what I mean? Like, I'm going to get wealthy here. So you'll see you'll see this happening. You know, me and the wife are saving a ton of money in our uh, personal account, right? We want to try to get an investment property by the end of this year. On, on our personal side, you know, open up, you know, obviously another LLC or shell to kind of protect us from that. And then, yeah, just, just building it all out, man. I have my life and health insurance license. So I'm kind of building that up slowly, but it's, it's tough. Like I was saying in the beginning, you don't want to be like, you know, Hey squirrel, you know, you want to <laughs> hey focus on one thing. You know, if you're trying to do multiple things and block time out in your calendar so that you can make sure it doesn't consume, you know, too much of your time, right? Diluted focus gets diluted results. So that's where you're going to see me, man. I'm looking forward to it. Um, you and I are also kind of on the, the committee for TCS. So I'm looking forward to building that out and just mm-hmm. kind of building relationships and my team and, you know, seeing how we can affect the community and yeah. Awesome, brother. Yeah, I that's what I love about that question too, because we're you're gonna rewatch this. So you're putting it out there too. I mean, that's putting what you just said, you're putting it out there in the universe too. And I'm gonna have you on this podcast again in the future too. And we're gonna talk about all this stuff. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, we're gonna talk talk about it. And you're gonna be, you know, you're gonna have that seven figures, you're gonna have all these things that you said, the family and everything, just like you answered in that question. I'm gonna be like, wow, look, look. Look where we are. I'm going to replay that video. Uh, so love it. Last question, what this show is all about. What exactly do people need to look for when hiring a welding contractor? And why should they choose Nate Swink and Swink's Welding as their contractor of choice? Yeah, I would definitely say communication and care, right? You want someone who gives a shit. Not a lot of people do that anymore, right? I just got off the phone on my way here with a fellow contractor, Nick, I'm like, Hey, Nick, how's that job going in Mahalan? You know, you're doing the concrete. They use a different steel guy. They're like, Hey dude, they're wishing they hired you every day because the guy's not performing and he's not communicating. And there's been times that I haven't been performing as a contractor. It's part of learning, but I always communicate whether you're going to call me or one of my PMs and rip their freaking head off through the phone. We're going to pick up the phone and we're going to take it. We're going to communicate and we're going to work the problem, right? Proactively. Um, and we're going to commit ourselves to excellence. We're going to constantly commit to improving our product and our experience so that you have a better experience, right? Less problems so that your business can run more fluid. So that's why. And because we're the best. You want the best, right? <laughs> it's pretty simple. Nobody nobody likes driving a crappy car, 
going to a crappy restaurant. You want to go to the nice restaurant. So that's who we are. We're the nice restaurant of steel. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. I, I love this. This has been, it's been a pleasure having you on, man. I'm glad we finally got to do this too, brother. And uh, last thing before I wrap this up is, uh, where can people find and connect with you? Cause you're doing some amazing content. So they need to go check you out. Yeah. yeah. So for the business, you can check us out on Instagram at swinks welding. And then for my personal brand, you can check me out as well on Instagram, Nate underscore swink. I put a lot of uh, good content in there about entrepreneurship, business life, um, you know, all sorts of stuff, just real, quick hitters that you'll get some sometimes some laughs whatever check it out so also building that out yeah now you've been good with it man you've been consistent like i said so yeah everybody definitely go check that out it's been great nate's been doing some awesome content too and i commend you every day doing it too uh that's a that's a lot too so good yeah and if you um that. you know if anybody else wants to connect whether that's you know questions anything i can help i don't know a lot but i can help you with anything that i do know you can call me text me 805-404-7526 um you know dm me whatever but you know here to here to give value and hopefully reciprocate that you know <laughs> well you do know a lot give yourself some credit too man because you've been through a lot you've been through a lot more than a lot of people at your age too so uh no but I do appreciate you coming on today, man. Glad we finally got to do this too, for sure. This was awesome. So I appreciate you, man. Yeah, awesome, brother. I appreciate you. Looking forward to doing more life with you and your wife and just kind of just love you guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, man, for sure. Much more to come for sure. But uh, for everybody listening, thank you all for listening. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, do what you guys got to do. You know, the routine five stars only on iTunes. It goes a long way. So take the time to do it because that's what this show is worth. With that being said, thank you all for listening. I will see you guys on the next episode.